Hello everybody, this is Lara with your weekly video for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending, well, Thursday 14th of April, and I'm recording this on Good Friday, the 15th of April 2022. Price remains within a downward sloping channel, both wave counts remain valid. The first preferred wave count is bearish for the short term. It expects a bear market may continue to reach support about 3195.28. I do still have an alternate wave count which is bullish, a short term target for that is 4675 and a longer term target 6743. Elliott wave analysis first, classic analysis last. The Elliott wave count sees a fourth wave at cycle degree beginning here in March 2020 and a fifth wave at cycle degree beginning. Cycle 5 may only subdivide as a five wave motive structure and within it primary 1 may be over at this last high and primary 2 may be continuing lower as a double zigzag. It may find final support about the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of primary 1 which is at 3195.28. Within an intermediate Y when I know where A and B have ended I'll add to this target calculation at minor degree. It may change or it may widen to a small zone. Primary 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 below 2191.86. Let's take a look at the daily chart with a high for primary one. This point up here, here's the first zigzag and a double. It's labelled intermediate wave W. The double is joined by a three in the opposite direction labelled X. And the second zigzag and the double to be labelled intermediate Y may be incomplete with minor wave A within it, an incomplete five wave impulse. Minute one and two complete, minute three underway, minuet one and two, Within Minuet 3, no second wave correction may move beyond its start above 4521.16. Along the way down, a new low below 4388.84 would add confidence to this bearish wave count. At the daily chart level, this is an alternate wave count. It looks at the possibility primary 2 was over here as a double zigzag and primary 3 beginning there with intermediate 1 incomplete with minor 1, 2 and now minor 3 incomplete. A target for minor 3 for minute 5 to reach 0.618 the length of minute 3 within it at 4675. Minor 3 in impulse with minute 1, 2, 3 and 4 complete minute 2 an expanded flat, minute 4 a double zigzag. A couple of problems with this wave count now and one reason why it's an alternate. The overshoot and we can see on an hourly chart a breach of the lower edge of this channel by downward movement on Thursday looks wrong and the proportion of minute 4 it's much longer lasting to minute 2 in terms of duration giving this part of the wave count the wrong look. But the S&P just doesn't always have good proportions, so we do need to continue to consider this as an alternate. And I like to always try and give you an alternate, and this is a reasonable looking alternate. If minute 4 continues further, it may not move into wave 1 price territory below 4276.94. The classic analysis for the end of the week. At the weekly chart level, the last these three candlesticks here do complete an evening star candlestick not a particularly strong one but this downward candlestick does have push from volume so that is fairly bearish comes after a little bit of upward movement resistance holding at five sorry four five four five look out for next support about four two six zero this last completed week sees price falling of its own weight that's a shorthand way of saying price can fall due to an absence of activity from buyers just as easy as easily as it can due to increased activity from sellers. But this week is a short week. New York was closed for Friday, so this only includes four sessions of data, not the usual five. So we really can't read too much into that. On balance volume range bound, no signal at the weekly chart level still. RSI neutral, ADX indicating low cl no clear trend, and stochastics also neutral. With price range bound, on balance volume range bound, RSI and stochastics all neutral, and ADX indicating no trend. It's pretty obvious price is consolidating, and we need to wait for a breakout before we can have any confidence in the direction of the next trend. We don't have that yet. At the daily chart level, do we have any clues here? Thursday's session completes a strong downward session with volume pushing price lower. That's bearish for the short term. And price is closed really near lows for the session. 
Oh, the last signal from on balance volume at the daily chart level was bearish and it's moving away down from resistance now, again bearish. So this suggests downward movement may be more likely than upward, supporting the main Elliott wave count, but it's pretty weak support. ADX declining at this time frame as well and stochastics, sorry, RSI neutral stochastics oversold. So with stochastics oversold, price around support but volume bearish we may see support hold at 4375 but if we don't let's look for su support as noted on the weekly chart. What about breadth and volatility to round out the picture this week? At the weekly chart level both price and the AD line have moved lower. Downward movement comes with a corresponding decline in market breadth. The last signals from the AD line are all bearish, supporting the main Elliott wave count, and Lowry's is still very bearish, supporting a bearish Elliott wave count. Under the hood of this market, there is quite a lot of weakness, and that supports the main Elliott wave count, and it's this chart which is one of the biggest reasons why my main Elliott wave count is now bearish for the short to midterm. At the daily chart level, no signals for Thursday's session. Both price and the AD line have moved lower. Between price and inverted VIX, they've both moved lower this week. No short-term divergence. VIX and VVIX have both moved higher this week. No short-term divergence. The last signals, bullish divergence between price and inverted VIX here and bullish divergence midterm here between VIX and VVIX. This supports the alternate Elliott wave count. I'm going to give more weight to divergence between price and breadth than divergence between price and volatility. So a little bit more weight to the main Elliott wave count, but there is some support for that alternate. I have to consider both possibilities. For Thursday's session, both inverted VIX and price have moved lower, no new divergence. VIX and VVIX have moved higher, no new divergence there. And that's all from me this week with your S&P analysis. I hope all our members are having a most fabulous Easter.